I was totally amazed by Pimp C. It messed me up. Even when he was doing a lot of stuff like big for Big Mike. Yeah. yeah. I was sitting next to him when he when he was in the Fly studio. Yeah. Yeah. Black and chains and swinging things. I got Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. When I see a, you know, how they rock into a certain song, I'm like, okay, I gotta go do a, do a song that's making them drums pop like that. I mean, you know, because I know the elements of a song is just like a chef when he's eating something, he can tell what's in it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a, with, a, with a producer. I can tell what kind of uh, instruments was used, you know, that when a, to make a hit song. It's funny, uh, B King said the same thing. Yeah. And I hear the beat, I was in the band, so that's a gift and a curse. When you're in the band, you can't hear music normally no more. Mm -hmm. Anything you hear, you pick it apart instrument by instrument. So anytime I hear a song, I can see what you did. I can see what you pressed. I can, but when I can't see what you did, that's when you're good to me. Yeah, I can tell exactly he, what he could tell song. exactly what he hear hear songs different because of the way his musical background. Ex exactly, is. that's exactly right. You know what I'm saying? Because you can you can tell what's going into it the, by the rhythm of it. It doesn't necessarily have to be the speed of it. You just speed up the hi hats in the song, and that'll make it move. You know, it's just. Uh, just little, little little techniques and strategies that you can do with in a beat. You know, it's, in a lot, I like the kind of song. I like 808 a lot, doom, doom, doom. But I study Dr. Dre a lot. Dr. Dre don't use a lot of 808s. The boom, boom. You don't hear that a lot from Dr. Dre. You hear a knock that doom, doom, doom. That's what you're going to hear. From Dr. Boom, ah, boom, boom, ah. That, that's like, you know, that's what Dr. Dre uses because it's going to hit. It's going to sound like gorillas in your trunk mm -hmm. as opposed to just your trunk vibrating. You're going to hear a lot of hum bass. What you know did what you think that? about, because we talked about UGK earlier, um, when, when Pimp C first started pushing that music and he was, when you first hear uh, uh, super, super Tight, but the, the one before that, the first one, what did you think about uh, uh the, yeah, to tell me some goods and all that. I was totally amazed by Pimp C. It messed me up. Even when he was doing a lot of stuff like big for Big Mike. Yeah. yeah. I was sitting next to him when he when he was in the Black studio. Black holes and things. Yeah. yeah. Black holes and chains and swinging things. I got the head. You know, right. I was sitting next to him in digital services at the studio when he, he said, but I heard it before Big Mike. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's because I was, we were in Did he sing it first or did he? He was, oh, he just he make was the doing beat. the beat. Then he sung the hook. Let me ask you this, because this is a big thing me and Bobo talk about. Bobo, Bobo Luciano, shout out. He got super tight down there in Dallas too. He named his whole podcast that. Oh, wow. Um, uh, when you worked around Pimp C, there's mm -hmm. a big misconception, or it may be the truth. Um, David Banner. Bobo gets pretty much upset about this all the time. Some was said that, or said that he taught Pimp C how to use a beat machine. That I don't know. He may. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to understand. Okay. How was he making his music that you were just talking about? Right. Without a beat machine, or by, without making beats. How, well, how do you do that? Well, how did he I, make the beat? Okay. Well, I can tell. I don't. I I understand exactly what you're asking, but my thing is. To do, okay, I'm not a pianist. Okay. I play good enough to have my pianist, or my musicians, to do what I need, you know, and they can take it to that next level, whatever, but it starts with the idea that I give them. Correct. So a producer is more or less a conductor of the orchestra. Just okay. Like, that's the producer, you know, like prime example. I have people that are, I mean, like major musicians that working in the same room, you know, doing some stuff I need them to do. I know all of their parts, but they may not know each other's. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like the bass player might not know to a certain extent what he how he want the pianist to do this, or you know, or he want, you know, or even a horn player to do this part or whatever. But I can hear a part for every one of them. I'm like, okay, in the break, I want you to come, you know, right there and you make I'm gonna give it to me a little bit more busy right here or whatever, just to signify that this is the break and not the normal main, you know, main you know, main verse or chorus, you know, stuff like that or whatever. This might be the bridge right there. We're gonna rise up right here on the bridge. You know, I, I know how to I know but how, how did he make that. that fly hose in? He made that beat or how did he make yeah, that he, produce he that the, sound? What did he do? Well, he uh, he did the track, you know, so whatever, and he he just heard y'all he heard what he heard to it. That's what he was hearing, you know, hearing to it, whatever. And his the way he sang hooks was amazing. The way he sang hooks was amazing. And Bun would, you know, Bun would even tell you that, like, man, I, you know, 
Bond doesn't have to tell me that he misses Pimp C. You can tell. In nah, we know he missing that, but I, it, you because know, because it, it's because Bond is a phenomenal rapper. I mean, phenomenal artist. He's phenomenal. Bond, it's like making a, uh, it's like making a the, I mean, like the best tasting cake you ever, you ever, you know, you ever tasted in your life. It's missing the icing. Well, you got to understand, and, and that's my thing with, with, that's with PMC. Because Bond could be, I mean, like we used to call two people. We used to call them Cameo Kings, Bond B and 3-2. Like yeah. if any one of them, you can you, you know, get a little lunch, you know, if, if any one of them on your song. Because they're going to tear it down. And, and uh, you know, I, I can hear Bond on anything. Like look at, look at Big Pimpin'. Yeah, I don't care who you are. Bunk, bunk, and you know, put give you that work. DJ you know Burn one down there in Atlanta said yeah. that Bun showed him a lot when it come down to his yeah. craft as well. So my thing is, but like for UG real strong UGK fans like myself, you miss that pimp C coming with a hook, or you miss Bimp Bun over a pimp beat. You know what I'm saying? It, you miss that. Yeah, I think Bun like I said, it. we and and you see it, you see it in his interviews. I hadn't yeah. got a chance to interview him yet, but. You see it. I interview Steve Bilo. I interview the Bobos. I interview, and all of them say this about the fact of how the the Pimp C, you know, the way it affected them once Pimp C passed away. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Because it affected everybody, and right. more so. Even when I interviewed uh, Julia Beverly, like it's like these people, they they it's an empty spot there, of course, because of the impact that he brought to the game and to the music, you right. know what I mean, right. and to right. their lives. But the music was a big thing because that's their careers, and right. and right. and for for Bun, of course, that's a that's a that's a big empty space, man. Yeah, you can't man. replace it. Yeah. I mean, well, and because it's, it was a sound that we were so used to, man. I loved you know, it. I you know. loved it. Yeah, we on Boss Talk One One. Yeah, we gonna talk.